Okay, now we have our assets prepared. We can load them into Omniverse. Uh, first of all, let's open up the Omniverse Create. And you will see a UI pretty much like this. And first, we navigate to the bottom part of it. Go to the Content tab. Then here, we actually navigate to our pro project folder. In, our, in my case, it's going to be the work caddy. And we're going to that as a folder and you see previously we have this subdirectory for models and hair tubes and textures and in this case i want to go to the model subdirectory and i want to reference in the any model uh, one way to do the reference is just drag this model onto the right hand side of the uh, here you can see the stage tab here just drag and drop and it should already be referenced like this. Uh, you can see by default the model is referenced into the scene. And uh, we use reference instead of importing the model because in most of the cases we don't need to like really edit the model, like say pulling the vertices or edit the UVs. Um, and also by referencing, we can keep our current working scene size pretty small. And yeah, with that in mind, we can also reference the shirt model in, in, with the same process. We just select the uh, caddy shirt model mid. We just export it, drag into the stage view again. It should say something like this. So far, so good. Okay, so next step is to reference the hair tubes uh the two is actually reference a uh, usd file and for like heavy assets for example like the hair tubes it's probably more stable to create the reference through the uh, ui instead of drag and drop so to do that we can do file create reference then we navigate to the same project folder and assets in this case, we go inside the room folder and tubes and the caddy here, the from USD was the one we just exported and you can see it's about like 2.8 gigabyte size, it's pretty big. Uh, so do a reference. So it might take about two minutes to load uh, because it's a heavy asset. So I'll we'll stop recording and uh, we will move on to the next step. Okay, now we have loaded models and hair into the scene. We can go ahead and set up some basic render settings. Uh, first of all, we want to switch the real-time rendering to interactive path tracing. And then we go to render setting tab, which is in the right-hand side. Go here, tab, select render settings. First thing we need to do is go to post-processing and go to tune mapping. Set the to mapping operator to linear and then go to pass tracing again on uh, this little pass tracing tab here uh, we want to set the both max bounces and the specular bounces to 8 also the subsurface scattering uh, bounces to 256 and one more thing to, is to set the total sample per pixel to 256 and that should be a pretty good starting point uh, we might have to crank up some values for final render for, but for now these numbers are good uh, you actually can find more uh, detailed explanation of render settings by going to help reference guide then go to this page it should be a rtx rendering section here you go to render setting overview and there's some other render setting examples you can find in this page okay so once we're happy with the settings we can go ahead and save and uh, move on to the next step so the next step is to create a camera in omniverse and uh, to do that, we can go to the top left corner of this viewport and click perspective, camera, create camera from view. And this is a camera created and you can see in the stage view. Um, by default, the focal length is around 18 something. 
which is too small for a portrait shot. Uh, depends on the need. The focal lens can be uh, like around from 50 to 200 or even more. In this case, I'm going to set it to 180 and zoom out a little bit. Okay, now we need to change the camera resolution, which you can find in the top left corner of the viewport again. Click this settings. And you can find the render resolutions drop down here. However, the problem is by default, there's only landscape resolution to pick with. And, and we don't have any portrait resolution to select from this at all. And luckily, there's a temporary workaround, uh, which is add the portrait resolution into a user.tomo file. And let me show you how to do that. So basically, just in any script editor, you save a user.tomo file into this, uh, your C drive or users, username, documents, kit, shared. Then we just add a, a list called app.renderer.resolution.list. And basically, every two values represents a pair of uh, render resolutions. And you can see in this case, I already add a 3840 as the width and the 5120 as the height. And that is already a portrait resolution. And with this file um, in place, we can just restart uh, create. The next time you open it, you should be able to have the portrait resolution options. Uh, hopefully, we will have an easier way to override it. Uh, later on but for now this is the way to go okay with that out of the way we can move on to the next step so i've just restarted create and reloaded the scene and uh, with the user the tomo file update if we go back to viewport settings we should be able to see more options for example we can select 1920 by 2560 now and uh it's a bit hard to see and but we can easily see that by actually adding another backdrop object um uh, let's just reference this backdrop object in it's nothing fancy just a little two perpendicular planes get a little beveled uh corners that's pretty much it. And uh, now let's uh, move the camera a little bit closer and also rotate the backdrop a little bit more. So have a better framing that is like similar to the reference images. Um, in my case, uh, the backdrop is going to have negative 50 and the negative 50 is a uh, translation and the negative 90 is rotation here and then go to the camera again and just look yeah we already look into the cameras then we set the translation to 270 by 06 9.5 and uh, three for the translation, and uh, then for the rotation part, it's gonna be negative two, zero point two six seven, negative ninety, and okay, two point seven six five, something like this. And yeah, that should be a pretty good starting point of a camera. I'm going to go ahead and save and move on to the next step. So we just had our camera set and now we can move on to the lighting setup. And do create light. 
rectangle uh basically red light means rectangle light and okay first just rename it as key and jump back to the perspective camera you can just select the light and start moving around first you can select this move tool to drag it around and you can also use the rotation tool to rotate it like this i mean the goal is to just move the light around and match the highlights that's based on the reference images um but you know lighting is quite subjective to your personal preferences and in my case um i already found some pretty good values for my shot so i'm just gonna set it here change the size to 10 by 10 which is much smaller change the exposure value to 1.5 also i'm just going to paste the translate values and the rotation values because i already found these values working well and however you know just please keep keep in mind that you don't have to match the exact numbers because as long as it works for your personal preferences so yeah with that in mind we can go back to the shot camera it should look like something like this and also we want to actually assign a soft box texture to the light to make it a little bit softer so go to this texture file attribute here click browse and we already prepared some textures in soft images and lights and go to this folder we select this texture then it's gonna set here and the light definitely became uh, softer uh, oh don't forget to delete the default light that came in as a new scene and yeah that's pretty much it and it's in a pretty good shape to start with and now we can move on to the next step